boys who will stop your little game. We are the boys who will make you think again. Cause who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? If you think old England's done, Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21. But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun. So who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? If you think old England's done. James Fraser. Hi. Yes, you do. Hi. Dear Mrs. Pickering, I hope you found the funeral arrangements for your late husband entirely satisfactory. May I say how sorry I was that the hearse ran out of petrol just outside the city. <laughs> I'm sure your dear departed husband would have been proud of the way you helped to push him to his final rest. <laughs> And what a fine, strong woman your mother is. <laughs> I hope you managed to get the mud off her skirt. <laughs> Include my final account. Uh, let me see. One solid oak coffin, four pounds, fifteen and threepence. One set of brass handles, thirteen and sixpence. Transport there, three pounds, fourteen and twopence. That's a mix and allowance of two pounds... No, of 32 shillings. Aye, for the last 120 yards. Total, nine pounds, two and 11 pence. Profit, profit, let me see. Profit, three pounds, six and eight pence, three farthings. <laughs> Total profit for the week, 18 pounds, 17 and tuppence. Less six and a penny housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> I'll have a small herring tomorrow as a wee treat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be able to buy two more golden sovereigns. <sighs> That'll make, let me see, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and one, two, three, four, five hundred and four pounds, three shillings. Which, in present currency, is valued three thousand one hundred and two pounds four shillings. <laughs> oh, oh, mercy, mercy! No, didn't do that. Oh, sir, sir. Oh, who, 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 who's there? It's me, Doctor McCavity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another wee minute, will you, Doctor? Uh, 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 oh, dear. Uh, 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 I'll be with you in a minute, son. Uh, just uh, 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 which is just a little important. But I want the long, Doctor! Oh, boy. Uh, 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 I'm all right, John. I'm with you. I'm with you, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it is him. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, come in, man. Come away in. That's right. There you are. <laughs> I was just uh, listening to it, ma. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've come on but told Mr. Brewster. Has his time come? Aye. God rest him. Dear, oh dear. I'll away along and make the arrangements. Oh, I've come straight here. He went to not 20 minutes since. Then of time for a wee dram. <laughs> you're sit down, Doctor. Oh, you're kind. And you're welcome. I welcome. Welcome as the <laughs> as the flu in spring. <laughs> no. <clears throat> oh, <wait. laughs> <laughs> Bon, may your cup be full. Here, here. Doing your books, are you? Aye. Let me look at that. Six and fourpence is hardly worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard life. Well, 
I'll be open. The great Scot of sovereigns. Hundreds of gold sovereigns. Is that a fact? <laughs> I wonder how they got there. For every time it rains. You know, I find what you're telling me almost beyond belief, Doctor. I saw it with my own eyes. He's not my patient, you understand, so I'm breaching no confidence, but I... Well, I formed the impression that he's a trifle unstable. <laughs> well, I must say, we found him a little unpredictable, haven't we, uh, Wilson? Well, no, I don't think so, sir. I, uh, I think he's very predictable. I mean, every time we... Uh, decide to do anything, he invariably says it'll be total disaster. <laughs> the point is, if all that gold got stolen, I, I really think it would turn his mind without any shadow of doubt. You need to persuade him to put it all in some, well, in some place of safety. Yes. Well, thank you very much for the gem, Doctor. I shall do my best for him. You can oh, count on that. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Well, what do you make of that? Well, sir, quite frankly, I really don't think it's any of our business. Of course it's our business. Hmm? He's a comrade in arms, as well as a client of the bank. <laughs> it's my duty as his commanding officer, his bank manager, and as his friend to tell him that he must sell those sovereigns and buy himself an annuity. So that uh, you would take the commission? I guess I would, but that's nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Henry? Yes? Mr. Fraser's statement. Oh, yes, thank you very much. Yes. Just look at that. Poor old man, he's only got 15 pounds, six and eightpence. <laughs> we should have a collection for him. You could organise that. You're good at organising collections, Mr. Henry. Be quiet, Mike. <laughs> 15 pounds, six and eightpence, eh? and he's sitting on hundreds of them. Hundreds of what, Mr. Henry? Right. <laughs> Mind your own business, Mike. <laughs> Take your thumb out of your mouth. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I don't think he uses this, this account from one year's end to the next. Is it Coffins? It is what Coffins? <laughs> Mr. Fraser's sitting on. <laughs> you know, I have it in the back of my mind, Wilson, that uh, it's illegal to possess more than five of these. That does sound like Coffins. <laughs> it's supposed to be used to buy battleships and things. Not Coffins. <laughs> Andals. Is it coffee handles, Uncle Arthur? Uh, would you be quiet? <laughs> well, am I getting warmer? Go on, tell me. Am I getting yeah, just, warmer? Just stop it. Man. Stop it. Now. Stop it. Mind you, I wouldn't trust him an inch. The eyes are very close together. Are they? <laughs> I bet I never noticed. It, uh, it denotes a mean streak. Begging your pardon, Mr. Manning. I don't think it's fair to say Mr. Fraser's mean. Yeah. No. Only last Friday he let me have three bags of crisps. He said they were very rare and valuable because they were the real pre-war things. I suppose he asked you to pay for them. Well, only the proper price, not black market. Oh. How this boy ever got his school certificate, I shall never understand. Well, they weren't bad. A bit soggy, but the salt was dry as a bone. Use it in a lump. Mr. And the bag went... Get out! <laughs> I shall talk to Fraser tomorrow. Well, yes, sir, if, uh, if Frank's fool enough to buy himself old, worn-out crisps, I really don't see that it's our business at all. I'm not talking about crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Do try not to let your mind wander, Wilson. I'm talking about sovereigns, and he's got to be made to see that what he's doing with them is sheer folly. Well, he's very obstinate, you see, if he didn't know that you're prying into his private affairs. He'll send you away with your tail between your legs. <laughs> I don't often get sent away with my tail between my legs. But... Well, well, but uh, would you like me to drop a few hints? No, no. I'll deal with it. I'll be very tactful. Uh, I'll bring it up on parade tonight. That started it. That started it. <laughs> in the ranks. Stop talking. Silence in the ranks. Private pipe. Private pipe. If you do not silence in the ranks, you will find yourself on a fissure for conduct to the prejudice and not having silence in the ranks. It's only finishing my sentence. There won't be no time to finish those sentences when Mr Bosch German starts invading, young fellow, my lad. 
Not here now, is he? Oh, whoosh. <laughs> whoosh. Let the old fool get on with it or he'll be here all night. <laughs> right. Tonight, we're going to practice doing things in our gas masks. Excuse me. <laughs> respirators. What was that? Who said that? Uh, Captain Mannerin likes us to call them respirators. Ah, oh, well, that's as may be. But the thing is this. We've got to practice to such a high pitch that everything we do in our everyday goings on, we can do in our gas baths. Rest for the house. That's right. Silence! <laughs> now, the thing is this. One day, we were all going about our business when suddenly, it's Hitler lets it off. <laughs> Are we down our no. We just put on our gas respirator and carry on as usual. Because when you come to think of it, Everything we do ordinary, we can do wearing one of these. I mean, I can go on working in my shop, Pike can carry on banking, Mr. Fraser can furnish his funerals, and even Mr. Godfrey, you'll be able to go to the clinic, won't you, Mr. Godfrey? I suppose so. Uh, they won't be able to take my temperature, though. No, well, perhaps you could come back later. <laughs> you might be able to come back later and have your temperature too, wouldn't you? You can eat! No, no, that is right. You, you can eat. You can't eat. No, well, you can do everything else as usual. You can't eat drink. No, no, that's right. No, you can't drink. I can't clean my teeth. <laughs> well, that don't matter, do it. Who wants to go cleaning their teeth with Hitler gassing all over the place? You can't eat smoke. That's right, Mr. Fraser. Cigarette get pushed down your throat. <laughs> All this talk and nonsense, there's hundreds and hundreds of things you can't even do. Hands in the ranks, Private Fraser. I shall have you for insubordination. Now then, what we've got to do first is practice doing things in our gas masks. Respirators. One more interruption from you, Private Godfrey, and I'll have you doubling round the church hall 50 times. <laughs> now then, first of all, I'm going to teach you how to fix bayonets. On the command gas, I should put on my respirator mask. Right. Gas! Now, <laughs> the thing to do when you hear that command is to hold your breath and get this thing on as quickly as you possibly can. <laughs> get it on as quickly as you can. Right, yeah, put it on quickly. Come on, you've got to stop it. Get your rifle in your left hand. Go <laughs> get your fish your boots. James, what are you doing? Take it off. Oh, sorry, sir. I'm trying to teach them. <laughs> I'm trying to teach the men how to fix bandits in their gas masks, sir. Respirator. Yeah, we keep telling him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the men in. Right, sir. Will you uh, fall in, please, in three ranks, uh, quick as you can? Now, I'm going to speak to the men mm -hmm. about money and security. Mm -hmm. On a broad basis, you understand. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I will soon see if Fraser gives himself away. Oh. Right? <laughs> now, before we would dismiss, I just want to have a little word with you about savings. As you know, this war is costing us millions of pounds a day. Now, I expect you all worked hard for all your life. Yes, I uh, had a hard life, sir. When I was ten years old, I had to get up at five o'clock in the morning and follow the milkman round with his horse. Yeah. And every time the horse stopped, the milkman shouted, Hang on to that horse, you young shaver. He wasn't a nice horse, Captain Manning. Because in the winter, in the cold, he used to stamp his feet and tread all over my toes. <laughs> in the summer, with his flies, he used to keep tossing his head and he used to toss me over his shoulder. And if I let go, the milkman used to clip me round the ear hole. <laughs> he only paid me tuppence a week, but it was a good life. <laughs> now, we must get our money to work for us. Right, isn't it, Thomas? Oh, yes, sir, certainly, yes, sir, yes. As I say, we must make our money work for us. There are people, you know, 
who put pound notes under the mattress. Now, this is, this is foolhardy. My mum keeps quite a lot concealed about her person. There's <laughs> nobody will find it there, least of all Uncle Arthur. <laughs> Would you be quiet, Frank? Excuse me, Captain Mary. Uh, my sister Dolly keeps quite a bit in her old teapot. It has a broken spout. Oh, you, you must take a very firm line about that, Godfrey. You must make her put it into a bag. Come on, Ringo. Are you toting for business? No, certainly not. I'm just giving you some advice. Now, the other thing is to, uh, is to think about the risk involved. I mean, you might have a bomb falling or a, an incendiary or even a burglary. Our burglars, of course, will be particularly on the lookout for gold. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I expect you chaps have much gold about, but uh, <laughs> if you have, then it's your patriotic duty to sell it to help the war effort. And put the money in your bank. <laughs> Not necessarily, no. Right, that's all. Squad 10. Is Miss. Come with me a moment, will you? Uh, yes, of course, I yes. I think that was pretty well done, don't you? Oh, yes, very well done indeed, sir. I think I'd rather handle that rather subtly. Yes, very, yeah. very diplomatically, sir. Yeah. I don't think Fraser suspected that I was referring particularly to him, do you? Oh, no, sir, no, not at all, no. But I must say, when you said the word gold, I did just notice that he jumped ever so slightly out of his skin. But I'm quite sure that he no inkling that I, that I really knew. Oh, no, sir. No, 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 not at all, no. Come in. Yes, Fraser. Got money? Just one thing I want to say to you. If you think you're going to get your hands on my gold, <laughs> you can think again. I don't trust banks, I don't trust bankers, and I don't trust you. That's all I want to say. Thank you. We are here. Seven pounds a king it with sixpence. <laughs> Please. Oh, here you've got onions. Shh. <laughs> You're well queuing outside. <laughs> you can have half a pound, but only because you were a regular. In the next thing. Oh, hello, Vicar. We don't often see you in here. We don't often see onions here. <laughs> you can have half a pound, but only on condition you promise to cut your sermons to eight minutes. <laughs> Getting in and out the pulpit. Here you are. Shove them under your cassock and look holy. <laughs> here, here, here. Have you heard the scandal about Fraser, the undertaker? Is there a woman involved? Be quiet, Mr. You shouldn't listen to gossip. What's he done? They say he's ordering thousands of gold coins in his shop. You can't move for them. Well, in that case, I shall ask him for a contribution for the church fabric fund. <laughs> You'll be lucky he's owed me 13 and 6 since last January. I've asked him for it till I'm blue in the face. I'll tell you what, if I don't get it, I'll county court him. What I say is parsimony is a sin if it's carried to excess. Don't you agree, Vicar? I've never really given it very much thought, Mr. <laughs> Yates. Well, he can't take it with him, and that's a fact. Oh, I don't know. They say he's going to put them in his coffin when he goes, like them Vikings did. What a waste. I shall go round and see him straight away. Hello, the operator. Are you still getting no reply? Well, I don't understand it, but thank you very much indeed for trying. Yes. Oh, Goodbye. Thank you. Don't understand this at all. Huh? Fraser's never, ever Mr. Parade. I do hope he's all right. Have you had any luck? Well, he we wasn't at the horse and hounds, and then... Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen him as a fox since Christmas. I know that, because we made inquiries. <laughs> yeah, we, we also made inquiries at the Red Lion, the Marquis of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fox and pheasant and the black horse. And what Mum's going to say when she sees you like this, I do not know. <laughs> yeah, sit down, Wilson. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Behind you, then. Well, Thank you. He wasn't at Charlie's Cafe, was he? No, we had a black coffee there, and that's not done you much good. <laughs> you are supposed to be your duty. And a damn good job for you, you are. Now, you sit down there and be quiet until you sobered up a bit. I don't want the rest of the platoon to know that their sergeants are drunkard. Frank, <laughs> the gallant captain is cross with me. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't in the 
the library, sir, and he didn't answer when we knocked on his door, but he's took his milk in, so we know he's taking nourishment. I went to the body rooms, but he was at the whist drive. Well, he's probably with some frozen in a gambling den in darkest warming. <laughs> <laughs> Warming to Sea Home Guard. Is that you, Captain Mannering? Fraser, where are you? Why aren't you on parade? I'm not coming. It's all your fault. I can hardly move for folk hammering on my door. Even that peely Wally Vicar. No, my walk this. None of ye are going to get your hands on my gold. I'm putting it where none of ye will ever find it. Now, here, Fraser, nobody wants your gold. All we're trying to be a bit... Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Put the receiver down. Was he in a call box, Captain Mannering? I don't think so. I didn't hear the tuppence go. Ah, then he was at home. The point is, what is he going to do? Well, I know what I'd do if I was in his shoes. I'd get all my gold and I'd melt it down. And when it was all hot and bubbly, I'd pour it into a mould and make of it a large vessel. And then I would paint it white and put it somewhere where it didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you'd, uh, you'd make it into a vast ennui? What did you say? <laughs> vast ennui, it's, it's, uh, it's French. I'm aware that it's French. <laughs> it means literally a night vase. Night vase? Uh, <laughs> Tiddly pot. What is it? <laughs> School, you know, when we were in the dorm, we used to call them tiddly pots. Would you be quiet? <laughs> I, I saw a film once, it was called Miser's Gold. Now, in that film, there was a man, and he had to hide his ill-gotten golden nuggets somewhere, so he hid them in a field. Well, the farmer came along and ploughed it up. Then the other man came back looking all haggard, and he searched around in the mud, and all he could find was stones. And that's what he said, you see. He um, said, stones, stones, my nuggets turned into stones. <laughs> I can't listen to all this drivel. <laughs> Just a minute. You may have hit on something. Have I? He would bury it. The point is where? In his garden. No, he wouldn't bury it in his garden. It's all concrete. You can't bury things in concrete. Not unless you've got one of those rheumatic drills. <laughs> How about Peabody Park? Yes, that's a possible. In the sand hills uh, at night. No, no, there's always too many people in the sand hills at night. <laughs> Let's face it, there are a dozen places. Yeah, I think you'll do it tonight, sir. You may be right, Jones. Now, look, there's only one way to deal with this. We've got to shadow him. What, not your draft? <laughs> well, now, we'll make a roster. We'll keep him covered throughout the hours of darkness. Right, Sergeant, put down all the net. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> Tiddly pots, that's what they <laughs> One, two, button your shoe. Put on Hello? Hello? Captain Manrin? Yes. Uh, Jack Jones, the butcher, here? Yes, what is it, Jones? Uh, uh, has there been some development? We saw Private Fraser come out, sir. Out of his house, we've got a box under his arm. Not an undertaker's box, you understand. <laughs> Go on. Uh, so, and he looked kind of furtive, and he moved off. So we followed him, and we followed him, and we followed him. Don't get on with it. <laughs> and then he went into a churchyard. So I said to Pikey, you stop here and watch him. Come on. He's in the churchyard. <laughs> and I went flitting from monument to monument, you know, like a wreath. So, you know, so they wouldn't spot me. And then suddenly I saw a telephone box and I thought to myself, oh, oh that's hunky dory. <laughs> so I got out two pennies and I was just... Hello? <laughs> oh. He must have put the phone down. I expect he's in one of his moods. <laughs> yes? Hello. Who is it? It's me, Chief Warden Hodges. Here, guess what I saw on patrol just now? Was it animal, vegetable or mineral? <laughs> this isn't a game. I've just seen Fraser sneak into the churchyard with a box under his arm. I'll bet it's full of gold and he's going to bury it. Well, when the vicar asked him for a donation, he told him he was as poor as a church mouse. I was there in person. He said it plain as a pike stop. Through his very own letterbox. <laughs> I just thought the vicar would like to find out what's going on in his churchyard at half past one in the morning. All right. We'll be round in five minutes. Here he is, 
Mr. Bannerine. Look over there. See, he digs, and he cackles, and he digs again. <laughs> He's been doing that for ten minutes. Dig, dig. <laughs> <laughs> Don't keep doing that. There he is. Do you see what he's doing, Your Reverence? He's desecrating. Don't think it's quite as bad as that, Mr. Yeager. <laughs> <laughs> They're never going to get my gold. Uncle Arthur? Hmm? I'm frightened. <laughs> Wait till he gets to the gate and then we'll go and investigate. He's off. Let's follow him. Wait a minute. I can see figures moving. This is the place. Right. Uncover it, Pike. Well, wait. With your hands, of course. <laughs> there might be slugs and worms and creepers. <laughs> get off. You ought to have somebody look at that boy, you know. <laughs> yeah. They're wearing army hats. I do believe it's Mannering's lot. What's he doing here? Come on, Mr. Yeatman. They're so heavy. Must be chock full of gold. Open it up. It's locked. Here, Pikey. Here's my bayonet. Do you think we should, sir? After all, it's not ours. You're quite right, Sponge. Leave it alone. Ha! Ah! Oh, caught you red-handed. You were just going to steal that, weren't you? I was doing no such thing. What are you doing here, then? I'll deal with this, Mr. Yeatman. Captain Manning is going about his lawful occasions. What, in a churchyard at half past one in the morning? I am very concerned for the welfare of one of my troops. You were filching that box. Will you be quiet, Mr. Yeatman? I'm going to speak to Fraser tomorrow, and I'm going to strongly advise him to sell these sovereigns and buy himself an annuity. On which you get commission. On which I get... Never mind that. He has a red dog. So you see, Fraser, <laughs> we acted from the very best of motives. But the fact that we could find your box so easily only adds proof to my statement. The bank is the best place for your valuables, whether they be in cash or in kind. But not your bank. Please don't interfere, Mr. Hodgson. <laughs> Fetch the box, would you, Wilson? Yes, of course, yes, yes. Have you got a key? Yes, sir. Give that to the captain. He's a fine man. <laughs> now, don't worry. <laughs> now, rest assured, Fraser, my bank will take good care of this. And a small contribution for the fabric of the church will be most gratefully received. It's a break. It's a damn brick. <laughs> Aye, it's a brick. And your vicar can have it for the fabric of his cap. <laughs> I'm holding on to my money. You're not going to hand put your hands on it at all. You're not going to have my gold. You're not 